Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have an Adobe XD design tutorial for you guys. We're going to be creating a website using the newest design trend of 2020, the soft UI or the new morphism. So we're going to be including that in our dark themed website. So let's go ahead and take a look at the project file for this tutorial. So this is what the project file is going to look like. I already have our main black color set as the background with these three guidelines. The first one is at 140, then there's another one following 140 pixels behind that one. And then same thing on the right side, I have one at 140. So those three guidelines, and I'll also have all the colors, character styles, and components that you need for this video. I will be using one image from Unsplash, so feel free to use any image from there that you would like. So make sure you download the project file that will get you to the starting point for today's tutorial. Let's go ahead and start designing. To start, let's go ahead and start getting some elements on the screen. So I'm going to start with the navigation links. So I'm just going to zoom in to the top left corner and grab my type tool. My first link is going to be called learn. I'm going to touch that to this second guide here from the edge. It's 280 pixels. And I'm going to set this to our navigation link text, which is 16 point. And today we're going to be using Roboto font. And this is set to medium weight. Make sure it's aligned to the left. I'm going to set this to 65 pixels from the top of the artboard. Then I'm going to hold alt and click and drag to create a, another link. And I'm going to put this 50 pixels from the first one. And I'm going to repeat that. For now, I'm going to set two links over here on the side. So I'm going to grab two of these, hold alt, click and drag. I'm going to align these to the right. We're going to have one called sign up. We're going to turn this one into a button later on. And this one's going to be called login. From here, we can add the rest of our text, which is going to be on this left hand side. So just below our navigation, I'm going to grab the type tool once again, just type in some junk text and I'm going to set this to our heading, which is a large 56 point font. I'm going to make sure that's aligned to the left and this is black weight. So I'm going to set this 170 pixels below our navigation and just paste in some text. I'm going to convert this to a text area and just drag this in and down. From here, I'm going to hold alt and click and drag to duplicate this text. And then I'm going to change this to the paragraph text that we're going to be using, which is 20 point font and regular weight. I'm going to be using some lorem ipsum here. To align this below our large heading, I'm just going to do this visually. I think 20 pixels will look good. Below this, we're going to have a link and I'm going to set this to our main link text. And this is actually using our green color that we're going to be using. This is 20 point font and it is a medium weight. We'll place this 50 pixels below our paragraph text and change the text to get started for free. Our last bit of typography that we need in this design is one footer link down here at the bottom. So we're just going to put footer link text. This is 16 point regular weight. I'm just going to set that to connect with us for now. And we'll put this somewhere around 170 below that link to kind of match the spacing up here. The next thing I want to do is block out what I'm going to have over here on the side. I know I want a video here, so I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle, the full size of the artboard. Holding shift and alt, I'm going to scale this in from the corner. And I'm gonna go with about 800 by 450 high. I'm gonna center this to the artboard vertically. And I'm gonna actually let this overhang this guideline here on the right, just a little bit to give some more spacing in between our type. For now, I'm just going to set that to a darker color just so we can see it and remove the border. The last thing we need in here is one more rectangle below this connect with us. And I'm going to set this to 250 wide by 100 high. And I'm just going to set that 12 pixels below this connect with us just for now. And again, I'm going to set this to a darker black so we can see it and remove the border. So now that I have most of the content blocked out, I think I want to go ahead and start working with that soft UI and implement that here on the video player. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to change this from a fill to a border. I'm going to make sure this is on the outside of that element and I'm going to bump this up to 10 and I'm going to change the border to the same color as the background or the mid black. And to make this stand out, I'm going to set the drop shadow and I'm going to be using this dark color which is 1B, 1C, 1D. And by the way, the background fill, which is our main midtone, is 26, 28, 2B. 
So once I have that set here, I'm gonna leave the opacity for now at 100%, but we may need to lighten this later. And since this is a larger element, I'm gonna set this to a five on the X, five on the Y, and we'll bump the blur up to 11. So if you missed my last video, what we have to do now is create another drop shadow in the top left corner. So I'm going to select that, Command C, Command V to paste a duplicate on top. And I'm going to reverse the X and Y value to a negative. And we'll leave the blur at 11. From here, we're going to add the lighter shade that we're using. This is the light color. The color code on that is 2F3136. And I've lowered the opacity down to 80% because I know 100 is too light. So I'm gonna keep that like so. And with that, we already have this nice soft UI effect going here where it looks like it is extruded from the background. I'm gonna select both of those rectangles and I'm going to apply a border radius of about 15 to this. So we're gonna need a video inside of here somehow. So I think I'm going to grab this, make a duplicate one more time, remove the shadow and apply a fill and remove the border. I'm gonna hold Shift and Alt to scale this down. And let's go with maybe around 23. So I'm just holding Alt as I scale that in until I have 23 on each side. So since we already have this soft UI element, I'm going to drag in an image here to see what this looks like. So I have this image here that I want to use. So I'm going to copy this and paste a duplicate on top with Command C and Command V. I'm gonna set the fill to the background color. And you'll notice that in XD we have some kind of weird clipping there on the edge. To fix that, I'm just gonna apply a one pixel border to the outside and that will disappear. And we need to drag the opacity down Somewhere around there looks good. And for our video, I have a play button. The color code on this icon is A8A8A8. Just going to select that, hold shift and select the image and make sure it is perfectly centered. Next, let's go ahead and do the same thing down here. So I'm going to hold alt and create a duplicate of this rectangle. And I'm going to drag this in and scale it down to the same size as this rectangle. So I'm going to delete the placeholder. And here we're going to set the fill and remove the border. Since we created a duplicate of the other element, we're going to have to adjust the shadow. So for this one, I'm going to scale this down to three on the X, three on the Y. And for the blur, we'll go with something really low like four. And we also need to change this to the darker tone for the bottom right. And we need to set the main fill of this to our mid color so that we have that. I'm gonna copy that and paste a duplicate on top. And then we'll swap the X and Y to the negative. And change the shadow color to our lighter shade. I think that looks pretty good, but I think I want to go with the same kind of border effect we have over here. So I'm just going to click and drag to select both of those rectangles. And for the fill, we'll remove that and we'll put a border of four. And for this one, I want the border to be on the inside. I also want to increase the border radius on the corner to somewhere around 20. So let's go ahead and put some icons in here. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, hold shift while I drag that out and set this to 60 by 60. We'll do a border radius of eight, remove the border, and we'll set this to a mid color black. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and add our shadow and we'll set this to the darker one. And I think we can get away with the same numbers. So let's try three, three and four. That's still looking good. So we'll duplicate this and swap these and change it to the lighter shade. So I'm gonna put this 20 pixels from the left hand side and the top and the bottom. Hold Alt with both selected and create two duplicates. So I have the center one here centered inside the rectangle with 15 on the left and the right, and then 20 all around the edges of this outlined container. So now let's add some icons in here. So let's do Twitter. We'll center that up and change the fill to white. Facebook, 
and Instagram. So that element looks pretty good. One thing I want to do is select all of this and just slide this over until this first link is touching this guide. Just so if we turn off the guides, we have a visual line created like that. With all of my testing of this design trend, this soft UI, when I have a lot of elements that are in this particular style in a design, it doesn't look as good in my opinion. So I'm trying to use it very sparingly. And another thing is accessibility is gonna be a problem with this style as this can be hard to see on certain devices or certain screen types. So knowing that I'm trying to use this on elements like an outline for this video player so that it's not going to completely ruin the experience of the app or website just because this can't be seen on their device as well. Uh, so when we use this on this button that we're gonna do up here, uh, I'm gonna use a color contrast to make up for that in case there is some accessibility errors. One thing I hope with this trend is as the year goes on, we get some real studies and testing with accessibility to see how well this is actually gonna work on like mainstream products. For now, I'm gonna use a color contrast on this important button because we don't want this to be hidden or hard for the user to see. So to start, I'm just going to select both of these holding shift and just drag them out of the way. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. With these other elements, these look like they're extruding from the background, but this one I want to be unique. I want it to look like it's kind of sinking in. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just drag out a decent size rectangle. I'm gonna set this to 148 by 82. And I'm going to grab this dot in the corner and drag that all the way in. I'm gonna remove the border. For this, I'm going to set this to the dark color and I'm going to select a linear gradient. I'm just gonna copy the dark color and paste it so that both of these are set to the dark color. I'm gonna go over here and copy the color code of our lighter color. And the swatch at the top is gonna to be dark. And at the bottom, I'll set that to our lighter shade. For now, we're gonna leave that as it is. I'm gonna copy this and paste a duplicate on top. With that element still selected, I'm gonna hold Shift and Alt and drag in. Just so we can see this, I'm gonna set this to a different color. I have 16 here on the sides, so I'm gonna match that on the top. So I'm holding Alt as I drag this in. So we have 16 all around, so it's perfectly centered. I'm gonna select the rectangle in the background, right click and copy, select the new one, right click, paste appearance will give us that same gradient. And I'm going to drag the darker color down here to the corner and the lighter one up like so. So I have this at kind of an angle like that. And we'll do the same for this one, except the darker color is up at the top. And I almost want this line down here at the bottom of the rectangle to kind of disappear as I drag this down, but just not like that, not too much, but just kind of visible so it creates that line, but it's not so obvious like that. And now I'm just going to adjust both of these gradients until I get something that I'm happy with. I think that'll work for now. So I'm gonna copy this one, Command C, Command V, to create a duplicate, holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to scale it in. And I'm also gonna set this to our green color. Color code on that is 39DDC9. And six on the sides here looks good, so I'm gonna hold Alt and drag the top in until it matches. Just like that. Drag and select all and make sure they're centered. So now I'm gonna drag that text in. Command Shift, right square bracket key with it selected. We'll bring it to the top in the layer order. And I'm going to select everything and center them one more time. And for this text, I'm gonna set that to a white fill. The last thing I need to do is select the middle rectangle and we're going to apply a drop shadow. Set this to our dark color and we're gonna use the same values we were using on the smaller elements earlier, three, three, and four for the blur. So I think that looks pretty good for now. So I'm going to group that together, selecting all of my icons and centering them together. Here is our right side edge. I'm just going to slide this over until the green is just touching that guide. And then we'll drag our login text over. For this login text, I'm going to have a lock next to that. So I'm just gonna drag out that icon and I'm just going to put about eight spacing there. Over here on the left, we're gonna have a logo. So I just have this study hat here 
I'm gonna align this to the left hand guide here, the farthest left one, and center it. So I think that is it for our navigation. For this heading, I want some of these words to stand out. So I'm going to grab the soft UI and change that to white. Same thing here. And then we'll grab XD and the period there and change that. It's gonna add a little bit more line height, I think, to this. So I bumped that up to 35. One more adjustment I want to make to the body text and actually this text down here is I'm gonna drag this down to 70% opacity to get this nice darker color, or I also have this here. You can select this. This is a color code of 808182. If I drag the opacity back up, it's the exact same color as just lowering the opacity there. And I think that's pretty much it. I just wanna add one little detail to this. So I'm gonna zoom in and just create a circle, and we'll do a 12 by 12 circle. Remove the border, and we're gonna set this to our link text color. I'm gonna select repeat grid. Drag over five, one, two, three, four, five, and there's 20 spacing in between each of those, and we'll drag down five as well. Once we have that, I'm just gonna drag this into the corner, put that somewhere like that. Command shift, left square bracket key, we'll send that all the way to the back, and I'm gonna drag the opacity down to somewhere around 7%. Gonna remove my guides. This is looking good, so we need one more of these. I'm holding Alt to create a duplicate, and I think I want this somewhere around there. For this one, I'm going to ungroup. And since we've done that, we have all of these selected now. I'm gonna hold shift and drag to deselect those. And then these last six down here at the bottom. With those selected, I'm going to delete them. And then we'll just group these back together and lower that back to 7%. This is a little too close to this edge. So I'm just going to click and drag to grab all of that and just shift it in just a little bit there, I think. Let's try lining this up to this guide. Yeah, I think that looks better. And with that, that brings this design to an end. That is using soft UI or new morphism in a dark themed website. I hope you guys enjoyed creating this design. One question for you guys before I wrap up the video, do you think the accessibility is gonna be a huge problem with this? Or do you think that we're gonna overcome it and figure out ways to utilize it in everyday designs? So leave your thoughts down below and we could talk about that. But that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design related content. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.